Hello. This week I'm making some videos about some of my favourite things. And some well, my favourite things are dies by Phil Martin, his Double D Boss Stately Dies collection. They come in various shapes and they are huge nesting sets of dies. So that's what I've used to cut and foil this back layer on my topper here with the, the double line on it. Okay, so that's the squares. You've got this kind of cross between a rectangle and an oval. That I find it great for putting behind oval toppers. He's got a rectangle set, but then he's also got a rectangle set with inset corners. So that's lovely. And there's the cross between a, an oval and a rectangle again, but in a smaller size. Now you can say, I like using these. I find they're very versatile. Let me show you the die sets. Now, these are huge die sets. Right, I've got the packaging, the original packaging for one of them, so you know kind of what you're looking for. Um, can I put the camera? Am I? Yes, let me go all the way out. There we are. So, you know, they come in A4 packaging. They're that big. And all my magnetic sheets are A4 magnetic sheets. So, Sentimentally Yours, Craft Eyes by Phil Martin, Stately Collection, Double Debossed, and this is Elegant Circles. So... I've got one of those dies out that I've been playing with. So, but you can see huge nesting sets. This is, you know, would be, I think, I don't know if it's too big for an 8 inch card. Um, really, really big die sets. So, lots of sizes, lots of dies. They're not cheap. You know, they're an investment. You don't have to foil with them. You know, I obviously am, but I do also use them without foiling, just with the the in deboss detail around the edge um, that's obviously something a different collection but that's the rectangles so you see that's you know this is I say a5 magnetic sheets the inset rectangles are and these are some other die sets from my collection and the squares so as I say they are really great versatile die sets um, and I wanted to share with you um, how to work with them to foil them. Uh, they weren't designed for foiling, so they're not as deep as cut and create or cut and foil dies that are specially made for foiling. Um, so it's a bit of a trade-off between getting the foil on the card and not getting too much foil on the card. There's, there's not much variation in between. Let me put these out of the way. That's it, where they're not going to fall anywhere. So I've got a couple of the dies out. So I can show you up close. Uh, let's zoom the camera in. I might need to put a piece of card behind this. And the camera's wonky. So, if I get the camera to focus on that. There we are. You can see you've got the cut line at the very edge. And then you've got two more rounded lines that go all the way around and they create the deboss detail. And obviously if you've got a layer of foil in there, they're going to press foil onto your cardstock. Okay, and here's a, a round one. And then I find that A, I need to cut the middle out of the, the foil when I work with them. Actually, I do that with all my cut and foil dies that are frames. Because otherwise, you get foil on the card in the middle. You can see little spots here and there. Uh, let me zoom the camera so the lighting's better. There we are. Can you see the, the light twinkling off the foil? Okay. And I've got a few missed bits of foil around the edge. Okay, because I didn't use an extra shim with that. So if I had used an extra shim with that, I probably would have got even more overfoiling in the centre. So for this one, I cut the centre out. So I've got no overfoiling in the middle. But I have got some overfoiling around the edges. 
okay now if i'm on plain cardstock uncoated cardstock solid core cardstock in fact then i can use a sand eraser just to, to take that off so let me reposition the camera and this is my flat sand eraser if you've got a Kajio Creations Creative Detail, you could use that, but I find it quicker in this instance to use one of these because the, the foil I want to keep has been pressed quite well into the card. So I can just take this across the top. Move the die out of the way. And just take it across the top and it will just take the overfoiling off the card and I'm just going to turn the card around and work my way around and in no time at all that'll be completely cleaned up okay and then I'll just use a soft brush brush away the debris from the rubber There you can see all that overfoiling that was there. Let's go on, let's put the camera up a bit. There. Is that focusing? That's better. There we are. So there we are. That's tied up all that overfoiling nice and easily. Now, if you are working on pearlescent card, you can't do that because the rubber will spoil the surface of the pearl card. So let me show you how we work with these and what we do on pearl card. So I've got a nice piece of blue pearl card here. And I think that's big enough. Is it? Not quite. Let's get a bigger piece. Now you might be thinking, Am I really going to foil this in the middle of there? And the answer is yes, because then I can actually use the rest of the foil to mat and layer a project. And then I've got a matching topper to go on top. So I'm taking my camera back to there. So I need a piece of foil and I need to cut the middle out of it. So I've got... I've got a self-healing mat that I keep just for cutting foil on. Oh, sorry, I've got something by my foot. Right, so. Let's see how much foil I need. So I'm not 12 high, am I? No. So I just need the width. So, I need to get my piece of foil roughly the right size. I'm just going to use this to hold the, um, the foil still while I mark where I need Ooh, I've got some damage on the foil there. Let's move that over a bit. Okay, so I've just creased the line just to mark where I need to cut. up my board and then I'm going to put my die down and I'm going to stick it down with the foil okay in the places I can I'm going to trim the excess foil away, very roughly. This is just to make it easier to stick my foil and die down on my card that I want to foil. So very roughly, just using a craft knife. Let's just move that piece of tape. There we 
we are. So that is taped down so the dye and the foil can't move. Okay, let me just bring the camera in a bit closer on this. There we are. So you don't have to stay really tight to the edge. A few millimeters out from the edge roughly following the shape so where i've got wiggles here you get to be very kind of rounded off wiggles just hold things steady as you as you do this keep your fingers away from the blade of your knife and if it's more comfortable do stop and turn it around so you, you're comfortable for cutting. It's another good reason for having it all taped down. It means you can take your hands off it completely and move it. There we are, I've gone all the way around. So that will save me getting over foiling in the middle. It also means I've got a piece of pristine foil that won't get damaged at all that I can use for foiling sentiments or something else on my card that's one a flower or something like that okay so let's get this piece of card and as I say you might think I'm mad doing it right in the middle of this big piece of card but then I can use the rest of it as a map for a project And I quite often do that. I'll, I'll use the centre of a piece of card that's going to be a, a matte layer. Right, so then, put your foil on your card. And put your die on your foil. Now obviously, if this was an image, like I'd got, probably haven't one I've gone straight to, to this. But if it, I, I've used, obviously matted and layered that, but obviously I could have used one of these dies the snowman picture, okay? So, whatever you're using it for. So you might want to get things in exactly the right place. So having cut the middle out of the foil, you can then see what you're doing to put it where you want it. So some bits of tape, doesn't need lots. Okay, and I'm going to need a, a shim. So, have a piece of craft card. So I've got lots of craft card. I bought, I bought a bunch, a batch of craft card at a really cheap price. And it was one of those things. I saw the offer and thought, well, that's a good price per, per sheet. Bought it and it was a huge stack I bought. Right, so I've got that ready to go onto my GoPro and foil. So let's bring that over. And you can see how I've got that set up. Uh, where am I? Am I? Yeah, I'm on the no. I want to be all the way back there. There we are. So my go press and foil. On here, I've got a thin metal shim, and it's hot, so I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to show you the other one in a moment. So thin metal shim. My die goes on there. And then I can put my extra shim on top. And then I need my second thin metal shim. Now I'm using two exactly the same. They're 0.5 millimeters thick, so they're, they're flexible. They're the sort of metal shim you might use in your die cutting machine to help you with very detailed dies or if you're cutting fabric. Um, so that goes on there. There's a second one on top. And that protects my lid from being scratched by my cutting blades. And then I'm adding, because I've tested this out beforehand, and it's, I know what generally works, right? Three layers of card shims. And again, I get to use those over and over again because they're not damaged by the cutting die. So that goes back on the base to warm up. So that will be a, a little while warming up. So 
So bear with me while I wait for that to warm up. I'm going to pause the candle while we wait for that. Okay, so this is all nice and warm now. So I'm going to roll it through my die cutting machine. So I do tend to roll them all at once and I tend to change the angle as I do it because I've got a, a, a wide A4 kind of size die cutting machine, I can do that. But if not, the alternative is that you, you open up the go press and um, change the, the angle that your um, die is sitting at. Okay. There's my shim, so I can re reuse that. Let's take that off and put that out of the way. So just looking at the back of this a moment, I can see, let me just zoom the camera. Let's turn the camera around a little bit. I can see, looking at the back of the card, that I've got a good emboss into that card. Okay, so that's a good indication that, you know, assuming your temperature was okay, um, and that everything had heated for long enough, that um, it will have foiled quite nicely. So I can just pop this out. Okay. And then sometimes I have trouble getting, getting the edge to come up. So if you do, Take a small piece of tape, put it at the edge, and use that to start lifting the foil. So I can see I've got quite a bit of overfoiling on this, a lot of overfoiling. So now, as I say, I've got a lot of overfoiling on this. So it might come away using some tape. Or I might need to redo it and not use that extra shim. So, because the foil I want is pressed quite well into the card, I can put a piece of tape on and peel it off. And most of the overfoiling will come away on the tape. Might need to do it a few times. And then you might want to get some small pieces and go on to particular areas. Okay, so I've done that first side. Move the camera around a little bit more. There we are. So I've done that side there, it's in the camera. Here. And there is still some overfoiling but nowhere near as much as there was, which was like that. So, as I say, you can keep going around it, going over it. And the tape won't spoil the surface of the card. Obviously, I, I, this is the tape I normally use cardstock I normally use so I know it doesn't spoil the surface of my card but generally speaking you can put masking tape onto some pearl card and because it's a coated card it doesn't sort of get into the fibres and spoil the card but obviously you do need some care I'm just going to work my way around this sometimes doing this helps because you, you kind of get a different angle on the ball that's stuck
and then you need a fresh piece of tape from time to time. Let me just angle the camera down so you can see what I'm doing a bit better. So, I'll probably spend a little bit longer on that but most of the overfoiling has then been cleared up you do find you get some some faint lines around the edge sometimes but quite often they they end up looking like they're meant to be there so there we are so as I say these dies come in all those different shapes and sizes and all those sizes obviously you can only foil with the ones that will fit onto your foiling platform so obviously you can't foil with the larger sizes but i do find them very versatile they, they they're one of my kind of go-to die sets or sets of die sets um whenever i need you know a mat a, a mat layer for a topper well, there we are so that was must remind you, oh, wrong one. Sentimentally yours, stately collection, double debossed, and this one's the elegant circles, but they're lots of different shapes and in, in the in the collection. I don't think they're having any more of these manufactured, so it's a case of get them while you can. And that's why I particularly wanted to share them with you. Thank you for watching.